everyone, it's Anne Marie with Anne Marie Creates. Welcome back to my channel. I'm just popping on today to share a project that I made. Um, that's actually my second design team project for Country Craft Creations using the spectacular Halloween paper collection from Echo Park. Uh, if you saw my last video, I made this um, coffin-shaped mini album. Look so cute. And they got little things that fly, little witches, and all that stuff. So you can check out the video. There is a free tutorial on my channel for that. Um, and I had some paper left over, and I decided I wanted to make a memory decks card. Um, if you follow along with me, I, I've just the past couple of projects that I've done, I've made with leftovers, I've made a memory decks. So this is the Memory Dex Punch, and you'll see in the tutorial, I go through all of it, show you how to make it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so this ends up being, I can't even remember how tall it is. It is, um, from the top of the, from the top to the bottom, it's eight and three eighths inches tall. So from here to here, and if you add the little cat, it's another two inches. So, um, so it's eight and three eighths tall and just about six inches wide at the widest point on the back um, of the coffin, sorry. <laughs> and you can see my little tag there with my name and all my, my uh, social media. So anyway, so I made a coffin, another coffin shaped piece of chipboard. I hope you can hear that, it's pretty sturdy. Um, I have some of the, these are either stickers or um, little pieces of uh, what do you call them? From the cut aparts and from the paper collection, I punched out. Uh, this bat is actually a sticker from the collection. You can see it's glossy. So I put glossy accents on it. This little cat, I should probably glue that down. This little cat um, from the sparkly foam, I have a die from years and years ago. Um, so I cut him out and I just did half inch wide pieces of acetate and kind of tucked them down under there so that it looks like it's flying. Um, a flying black cat because why not <laughs> um, so you can see so I have some of this I don't know if you could tell oh there it is so see the the glossiness of this black paper that is the craft paper glossy black um, craft perfect sorry glossy black paper um, that I had in my design team package um, and this is, it says shake your boo, boo thing. Uh, this was a cut apart from the paper collection. I think it was a four by four and I kind of trimmed it down, matted it up. Um, and then you can see, I just, I made a little rosette, super easy. I show you how to make, I think I show you how to make that in the tutorial. If you don't know how to make a rosette, there's so many people, so many of the design team have made rosettes, Tamara, everybody. Um, this is, <coughs> excuse me. So you should be able to find a tutorial um, these are some stickers I popped up on foam dots. Um, this project and the mini album I just showed you, you need a ton of foam dots. I'm just saying. If you don't like the dimension, that's fine. But uh, if you have foam dots, foam squares, whatever you want to call them, um, you'll need them. So boo to you is a little strip of the paper. And then underneath, I have this, I have this black lace. God only knows where I got it from. It was just in my lace bucket. Um, but it reminded me of a wrought iron fence. So I put that there and then I promptly covered it up. <laughs> so um, then I also have some black lace here. I hope you can see it underneath there. Some black lace. And then I have some white. Um, it's actually yarn, but I think it's like eyelash trim. It's like, I think you know what I'm talking about. It's like really fringy. And then I use this little bit. You can see the little orange pom-pom. That's the last bit I think I had left in my design team package. So how cute is this? Like you'll see in the video where I say, oh, this is so empty down here. It needs something else. And I came across the sticker. I forgot I hadn't used the sticker of the witch boots. And I was like, well, now she needs a hat. <laughs> so again, that's a sticker. Um, and then all these are little sticker pieces, like the teeny tiny, uh, what is that called? Uh, candy corn. Um, I had the boo sticker here and I put it on a popsicle stick I have. And again, this is a little sticker. 
the little bat sticker. I went glossy accents crazy on some of the things. The little pumpkin sticker, you can see uh, you can see where the glossy accents is. And then I just grabbed some out of my stash. I have a lot of different color sequins. That is my cute so, little memory deck. If you go back to my my um, project video that I posted a couple of days ago, if you go back and you look at that, I made a coffin shaped mini album and um, super cute with the same paper collection. And so I show you in the tutorial how I measured this coffin shape, what I used. This is a lightweight chipboard. Um, this is just a piece that I had left over in my stash. Most of us, if you buy a paper collection or a paper pad, you will get, um, most times, you will get some sort of a chipboard or a thicker like poster type board on the back of the paper collection. Don't just throw those away. Save those because you can use them for so many things. So anyway, so I show you exactly how to measure and how to cut this out. Um, one for the actual base of the mini album and as you can see this was the one that I used for the pattern paper. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller than the mini album and I'll show you that mini album in a minute. Um, so I'm using the coffin shape from that I cut out from the lightweight chipboard. Um, I'll show you. I have in my stash, it, this is just a, a memory dex punch. Um, not even sure that you can get this anymore. I've had this for ages and I barely ever use it. But you don't necessarily need this and I will show you how you might have a die in your stash. You don't even need a die. I can show you how you can create one of these without it. So I think I'm going to make another little rosette. So this is, I have two pieces of the pattern paper, which I love this pattern paper. You can see this was the back side of it. This was the front. Um, I cut these down to one inches by 12 inches, put it in my scoreboard. So I took two pieces of it, put it in my scoreboard and whoops scored at every half of an inch all the way across. So I did one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and so on until I got all the way over to the 11 and a half. And so I'm going to do two strips of it, of that, and I'm going to fold along the score, kind of accordion fold on the score lines, and I'll walk you through that. I'm sure everybody knows how to make a rosette, but in case you're new to it, I'll walk you through that. And then I cut out two piece, two one inch circles um, to glue the actual rosette to, and I'll show you that. Oh, by the way, get some hot glue ready because hot glue is your friend when you do, um, when you make a rosette. You don't have to have it. You can use, you know, your tried and true art glitter glue, which I always have that right here by my side. Um, you can use that. Then I have, this is the actual memory, you can see, there it is. Um, this is the actual, what makes it a memory dex piece, I guess. Um, if you're old like me, you remember these used to be, this is what was in those little index, index um, what do you call them? Not an index file. Rolodex. <laughs> this is actually the the old time Rolodex when we used to keep, you know, our addresses and our phone numbers and stuff in a Rolodex. My goodness, we've come a long way, haven't we? Because now it's in our phone. Anyway, I cut down a piece that's two inches by four inches and I did chomp it with the punch. I did create the little piece with the punch. Um... And I made it two inches tall. I may in the end cut that down, I, but I don't think so because what, what the purpose of this is, is, we'll take, after we cover everything, we will take our little coffin piece and glue it there. And I want to make sure it has enough contact here so that when somebody places it in their little memory dex hold, holder, um, that it will stand up and it won't just flop over, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I cut that out of the same lightweight, I think, 
yep, cut it out of the same lightweight chipboard. Then I took two pieces of artisan cardstock, cut them down two to four, did the one half inch corner rounder on it. Um, and these, uh, typically when we use chipboard and we don't want the raw edge to show, we will cover it with artisan cardstock. But yeah, that, that seemed like too much work to me. So <laughs> I just took a black marker. I hope you can see that. Here, let me put it there. Some black marker and literally just covered up the raw edges. I hope I did pretty good. You could see how I missed. <laughs> but anyway, so then what we can do is um, take one of those two by four inch pieces and we'll literally cover it up just like that. So one will go on the front, one will go on the back. And then you can see I didn't, I didn't um, chop it with the uh, punch yet, but I'm going to. And so this will, will most likely be covered up. So you won't really see. So see, it'll kind of look like that. Oh, I hope that makes sense. But we'll walk through that. And then, again, I don't know what this is going to look like, but we'll see what happens. So then I, I have some of the cut 3x4 and the 4x4 cut aparts I have left. I think I have like three of them left. And I think I only have two of the 3x4s. There's some scrap pieces of paper there. And there's two of the 2x2s that were in the collection. And then I have some of the 4x6s. I think I have one, two, one, two, three, four of those left that I haven't used. I somehow have to, the spooky, scary skeleton send shivers down your spine. And you're welcome. I'm sure you now have that song in your head because <laughs> I've been singing it for days. So this is going to be used somehow. Don't know how. Um, and then what I also did is I took, <laughs> this looks like a, a picture from a kindergartner, but no offense to kindergartners, but um, I took my little template and I laid it down and I measured a half of an inch. So I took, if you have some sort of a ruler that you can that's clear, um, like this ruler, Everybody, ha just about everybody has this ruler, I think. I just took it literally because I'm gonna wrap this in black cardstock um, from the back to the front and then the rest of it'll get covered with pat that pattern paper. Um, I literally took it, laid it on the, on the piece of black cardstock and lined up a half of an inch with the edge of the chipboard here, drew a line. And I did that all the way around so that when I cut it out, I have a half inch overhang that I can just adhere down to the front of the pipe. Hope all that makes sense. It makes sense in my crazy mind, but we'll see. Um, and then some of the things, like I said, I have some of the pattern, pattern papers left. I have scraps of the pattern papers I've used already. I have stickers and um, you'll know as soon as I do what I end up using. <laughs> Um, so then I actually did a, tra a tray of goodies. Um, some things that were provided in my kit, my design team package, sorry. I still have a bit of this beautiful sage green ribbon I'll use. And some, I still have a little bit of this orange tiny pom-pom ribbon. And again, this will all be anything that... I can link, I will link for you. How cute is that? Then there are, a, I have a couple, actually I have three of the Buttons Galore and more. Um, the Halloween collect, the Witchcraft Halloween collection. Um, I use them in my mini album. You can go back to my last posted video. Um, I show you how I use these buttons and you can see here on my finger. See that little boo-boo? Yeah, I was trying to cut the shank off of the one of the buttons and I, I injured myself. So as somebody once said to me, there's no bleeding in scrapbooking. <laughs> anyway, so those are the things that I have left over from my kit. I just went through, I shot my stash and um, I love to shop my stash. I couldn't tell you where I bought these. Um, I decided I needed, I was looking for some autumn type things. So I may never end up using these, but I have these these leaves here. Um, 
don't know if I'll use them. I may, I may not, but I have them in my little sorting tray. I have some orange sequins trim. God knows where that came from. Um, I have this beautiful, um, this is not ribbon. This is lace. You can see it's a black lace. This reminds me of a wrought iron gate. Actually, I think it's supposed to go like that, but I'm going to use it, I think, like this. Looks like a spooky gate to me. Um, so I have that. I have some, oops, <laughs> just some black scallop lace I've had in my stash forever. I have some white eyelash trim yarn from when I thought I was going to be a crocheter. <laughs> I have some black, oh, it's sticking to me. I have some black eyelash trim. Then I have just this series of little, little beads. I don't think I'm going to make a little dangle, but I might. I don't know. We'll see. So I just went in and I picked out, this is probably my favorite. It says, a muck, a muck, a muck. <laughs> I love it. That's a bit really big bead. So who knows? Um, then I just have some cute ones that have like little little spidey webs, some orange, some green, um, some like white and yellow. I don't know. The only thing that I have some purple ones, but the paper collection doesn't have any purple. So unfortunately, so this is my little box of goodies that I'm getting. Oh, and I also. I have this orange, it's hard for you to see. It's an orange tool. Um, I don't know, I may end up using it, I may not. But if I do use it, it's right there and readily available. So I have an idea for it, but we'll see if it works out. So I'm just gonna roll that back up. I'm gonna set this aside, cause that's, that's what we'll use probably towards the end. So I want to get started. Let's make, oh, I did not turn on my glue gun. I will be right back. Okay, while my glue gun is warming up, I will share with you my project. This is the the little coffin shape mini album that I made with the super cute, the little witch with the sticker. She's flying, I connected her on a piece of acetate and we're probably gonna do that again somehow on this one. Then I have the moon, there's a little uh, ske skeleton and crossbones and a bat sticker. Actually, it's a, um, a foamy, it's a glittery foam I had in my stash. Everything else, um, and then I had the spider in my stash. I, I just had to use him. He's just so cute. Everything else was part of the collection. We're gonna make a little rosette like this. And there is the, the beautiful green satin ribbon. These are, I was cutting the button shank off for this cute little spooky, spooky cat when I was almost critically injured. <laughs> And then there's the ghost. So I just glued them onto one inch circles and glued it onto the bottom of the ribbon. And then just, you know, it says trick or treat, smell my feet. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I won't show you all of it, but this is just, just a quick preview. You can actually go back to the video and take a look at it. Um, I think you're fantastic. <laughs> there's that there's another one of the buttons here's a couple more of I can't remember if this witch hat was a button or if it was just a flat back that was in the package um, I know that the little spidey here he was just a little flat back cabochon um, these are some of the stickers I just popped up onto foam dots and then I just made a oh, I guess you heard that <laughs> that uh, I made a waterfall and it's closed with a magnet and it's just a little four section or a four flap waterfall. And then I just have like three little tags I made. These were stickers from the paper collection. So you can see it's super cute. I took um, 
the pattern paper template that we have and I just cut it down I think by a half of an inch and turned that into a pocket. I love the spider web paper. Here's the cute little skull and crossbones again and then there's the back. So yeah. So we are going to get started here. Again while the glue gun heats up let's let's um get ready let's get wrapping <laughs> sorry i haven't had enough coffee this morning so i just took a piece of leftover or scrap artisan cardstock i don't like to call my artisan cardstock scrap because it's fantastic <laughs> um i keep any pieces leftover pieces i have a big bin that i keep them in and they're just they're just fantastic so Again, I'll show you. Um, you can go back to the other video um, that I mentioned, but this piece of chipboard measures at, it wide, at its widest point here, five and five eighths of an inch, and then it is seven and five eighths inch tall. Um, and then I show you in that video to measure in certain number of inches here, measure down here, connect the dots, to make a coffin shape. You don't have to make it this big if you don't want to. You don't even have to make it, but I'd love for you to make it. So again, I just centered it here on the page, or tried to. I lined up the edge of the chipboard on the half inch mark. You can see, oops, I don't have it straight. Lined it up, and where'd my pencil go? Oh, here it is. Literally, just did that, you don't have to do in a half inch. You can make it bigger if you want to. Then I just drew a line. Then I just came to the next one. Again, half inch, drew a line and went all the way around. And then all I'm going to do, I'm not going to, you could use your paper cutter if you want to, but what I'm gonna do is, this is from the bottom, I'm gonna just cut along those pencil marks that I made so it would be here, 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 and here. So that should give me at least a half of an inch, give or take, around, around the coffin. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I am the world's worst straight line cutter. So as pro tip, get yourself like long scissors <laughs> because all you have to do is line it up here and you can make one cut, one continuous cut and such, you know, where that's where things go bad for me. Um, but you can hear I'm just doing one, one cut. And this doesn't matter if it gets off the rails here because you have a half of an inch and we are going to cover this up anyway. Whoops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so don't throw this away, this is gold. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna now grab my, oh, actually I'm gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna grab my artisan, no, no I'm not. I'm grabbing my art glitter glue and I'm just gonna put a bunch down. You could cover this if you have score tape sheets. You can do that, but I like to keep my score tape sheets, which I just restocked from Country Craft Creations. I like to keep them for the covers of mini albums. So anyway, just set this down, center this the best you can. And then just apply some pressure. And then I'm going to turn it over. And like kind of spread that glue out. So again, that's the back of it. This will be the front. And give that a minute. I did not get a baby wipe. I don't like to use wet baby wipes, but I forgot to take it out to let it dry. Okay. 
there we go and then we are going to if you've ever watched one of my videos or any of the other designers and craft creation designers including Tamara you'll recall when we do the lay flat method we take we use our desk now this is a little different than regular mini album because it's shaped but what we're doing here is just what are we doing? We're creasing <laughs> the cardstock, kind of scoring the cardstock. Using my desk to just line it up, and I'll come back and burnish after I do all of it. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish here. Come to the opposite side, give it a good burnish. If you have a, a way you like to do this, then absolutely knock yourself out. But this is how I do it. Again, there's no rules. I won't tell. Did that side already? Okay. And I think you can see what it's doing. It's just our score line is just right up to the chipboard. Okay. So then, uh, let me think how I want to do this. I think I am going to. I'm going to take my scissors. You can see where that little intersection is. I'm going to cut up to the chipboard, just right on that score line. Okay. I'm just going to move the others out of the way. I'm going to do the same on this side. Hmm. No, I'm not. Let's see. So I think. What we're going to want to do here is, because this is angled, it's kind of funky and kind of a little bit different. So I am going to fold up, fold this short piece up, and you see how this is here, and then I'm going to fold that over and do the same on this side, and it just kind of marks, gives you that little mark on your paper whatever that shape is. I hated geometry. So I'm just going to cut right along that little score line. So do it there, do it there, and then cross my fingers, it works. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my wet glue and I just like to put some wet glue right along the edge of the chipboard. And then here, and just glue it down. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just going to leave these flaps, leave them alone until I figure out how to do it. <laughs> okay, so we'll do that one. Wow, you are literally watching me in real time trying to figure this out. Okay, so let's put some more glue here. Okay, so the goal here is to make sure that all the raw edges of the chipboard um, are covered. If for whatever reason, hmm, okay, for whatever reason, if you miss a little piece here and there, just go with a black marker. It'll, that'll help. Okay, so now we're at this point. So it looks like it has little cat ears. That's really cute. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do you can see here you should still have that little line if you fold it the same way I did. I'm just going to cut right up on that line. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to do the same over here. Cut right along that line. So, and then, let's see, let's do the same on the bottom. Right up to the chipboard. 
oh my goodness, excuse me. Okay, and then I'm going to cut it flat right there. And so, if you recall, we, we folded this way, then we folded up this way. Um, I think we should be good. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to come right, see where the angle, or that edge right there, of that angle, I'm just going to cut right up to it. <coughs> oh, my goodness. Excuse me. So that, again... Oops, I forgot on this one. Just going to go ahead and trim that little piece off. <clears throat> so you should have something like that. So that when you wrap these in, the edges of the chipboard are covered. All right. Wow, I am really flying by the seat of my pants here. Okay, so let's put some, some glue there. Then we're also going to put some here. And then just wrap that over. Hmm, pardon me. And that should give you really nice mitered corner. A faux mitered corner. Go ahead and burnish. Okay. And then we're going to do the same. Sorry for the sniffling. We're going to do the same here. Glue it down. Oh. Now what I did see is that that is just a little bit too... Um, the angle is a little too deep there. Now, again, you don't have to worry. This is gonna get covered with pattern paper, so if it's, you know, if it shows right now, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get covered up and nobody needs to know it's there. Okay, so, whoops. All right, so let's just take our bone folder <clears throat> just make sure that we get good contact with the chipboard. So there, we have it wrapped. But now what I like to do, because if you notice, I put glue um, right up to the edge of the chipboard. <clears throat> I like to do that so that the cardstock actually holds, grips onto the chipboard instead of it just wrapping over. So then what I do is I take my bone folder and I just flatten all the way around. You have a nice flat, no no bubbles or waves. I don't know how to explain that um, in your cardstock. So, okay. So next we're going to want to cover up this part. So. I just happen to have, you can see I used a scallop punch. I just happen to have this scrap piece um, that I would like to use as the background um, of my little coffin here. Um, I, there are, I have one other full page sheet, but it's, uh, I don't know. This, like I said, this is probably one of my favorite pages in the whole collection. Uh, I don't want to use, most of this is going to get covered, or most of this is going to get covered up anyway, but I, I like that you'll still be able to see somewhere around the edges the actual pattern. So take your, um, and you could do this before you cover it. Now that I think about it, that might have been the smart thing to do. Just take your, your little template here, or your memory decks piece, and go ahead and just lay it face down or however you want to do it. You can see how mine's just a little bit too small, but that's okay because we are going to trim it down a little bit further. So actually, I want to straighten everything up here. Pardon me for my super, super dirty <laughs> um, 
Scorepal page, I mean my Scorepal mat. I have a new one, but, all right, so I am going to line mine up. Yeah, just be careful if you have um, horizontal stripes like I do. For me, it's inevitable it's gonna end up crooked, but I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this with, a, I'm using a pencil. I'm just tracing around it. I don't know if you'll be able to see my pencil lines. Oh, yeah, you can. So again, I'm gonna take large scissors because remember, kinder, kindergartner crafter here. Just gonna cut that off. Again, mine's gonna look a little funny because mine's just a tad bit too skinny. Oh, I contemplated using that side. I may still use that side. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Again, this part doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we are going to cut this down. Oh my goodness. I think I screwed it up already. Yeah, we'll see. So, oh, well, it's not too bad. Okay, so now what I want to do, get this out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so now we have that. What I want to do is bring in my, come back to a ruler where you can see through it. I am going to take, I'm going to line up a quarter of an inch with the edge here. Cause you know how we always, uh, oh, no. wait, what am I doing? I'm gonna do it this way, sorry. I'm gonna take a quarter of an inch, line that up as best I can, and draw a line. So that's gonna be my next cut line. So then I'm gonna do the all the way around. I hope you can see when I do this. Mm. Apologize if you can actually hear my neighbor out there. I think he's blowing leaves. Of course, nobody does anything until I wanna, until I wanna record. Okay. And whoops. So I'm going to leave that bottom alone. So that's probably going to end up a little shorter than I originally planned, but that's okay. Double check that. Yep. Quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to do the same. Cut along those lines. Remember, we're not wrapping this one. This is just going to be the background and yikes it feels really small <laughs> I hope I didn't ruin this ah, no it's not bad okay that looks like a very fat quarter of an inch because it is it's a little bit too wide I'm going to redraw that So clearly, even though I had a ruler, okay. just redrawing it, I'm probably a sixteenth of an inch off, but we'll see. And again, 
you can eyeball this or if you want to use you don't want to put any if you you could cover this side up with black cardstock too or you can instead of black cardstock you can just use pattern paper to wrap it however you however you choose but oh well, that's not too bad um Yeah, that's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut down. I'm just eyeballing this one. The bottom. Okay, that's not bad. Oops, that's crooked. All right, actually I like it. Okay. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I also have these awesome inks. I showed this in my last video. They're all to new. The Sun Kiss Delights Fresh Dye Ink. I'm going to use the Melt... I mean, well, I'm going to check out the Amber Blaze and see if that's dark enough. I'm going to ink the edges. Uh, let's see. This might be a little too light, but let's see. In my mini album, I used the Melted Butterscotch. And I am just going to go ahead... What I want to do is just cover up the white of the edge of the cardstock. Oh, that's actually a good orange. Okay. I was worried it might be a little too, you know, a little too light. It wouldn't show up, but it shows up actually pretty well. So, see, you can't really see it. I, I'm not going to, I could come in like this. You can see a little more of it. Oh, I love it. But I'm not going to use, you know, my, oh, one of these blender tools. I just think, I actually really like that. Okay. That's probably one of my new faves. I'm going to leave her right there. All right. Put this away. So now, <coughs> excuse me, oh, oh, I love that, oh, I hate to cover it up, okay, bye skellies, I'm looking for a little more, I'm not looking for really like spooky spooky, I'm trying to do cutesy spooky. So, just put my glue on, and then just move this around, make sure my lines are straight. There we go. Now I have ink all over my hands, but that's okay. So now, we have our little coffin is covered up. Don't worry about this, it's going to get all covered up too. The back is black. Um, I have a sticker. So the purpose of memory decks is, at least as far as I think, these memory decks is really fun is when you have crafty friends and if you take part in a swap or um, whatever. So, and I've done it several times and I don't have them here in the room with me, but when you're part of a swap, a lot of times the people that you swap with will send you a memory deck. So it's kind of like their little, like an artist trading card, but better, I think. Um, so what, what typically they do is on the back, you put like something about yourself. You just say your name is, this is where you live, uh, your favorite color, you know, whatever, whatever the case might be. So and that's kind of fun. You collect them over time. Um, and then you have these beautiful little pieces of artwork from people potentially from all over the world. I have some from people in Ukraine. I have somebody from Poland. It's just, it's just super, super fun. I should someday do a video with all mine. Anyway, so, okay, so there we are. So as I'm looking at this, now the fun part starts, I think. I mean, how cute is that? But oh, what I need to do is actually add this. Let's get started to the, on this. 
I am going to grab a scrap piece of the chipboard. I just have a scrap piece of chipboard here. Okay. And let me grab my hole punch. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make the actual memory decks part. <laughs> um, so again, I mentioned earlier that I took a piece of the lightweight chipboard and I cut it down to two by four inches. And then I took my punch and I punched it. But you may not have a punch. So um, you don't actually need a punch. This is just, does it happen to be? It just happens to be <laughs> four inches. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut down the size of it. So what you can do, you can take a ruler and find your center. So obviously if it's four inches, your center is at two. What I would do is go over, let's see what this has here. Okay, so from the center, let me lay this down here so I get this number, this for you properly. Okay, if that's two inches. So I would come up about a half of an inch. So again, we're going to make sure this is straight. Or you can eyeball this. This doesn't absolutely have to be perfect. So there's that two inch, the center. Oops, sorry. I hope you can see that. There's the center. I'm coming up a half of an inch. And then I'm gonna come over a half of an inch and make a mark. And come over another half of an inch and make a mark. Oh, that doesn't look right. Sorry, I went over too far. So up a half, and over a half. I went way too far the first time. Okay, let's just get rid of that so it doesn't confuse either one of us. Okay, so we have just those two marks. So if you have a hole punch or if you have a crop a dial, um, I would use the fatter side. I think the, the larger hole is a 3 16 I'm pretty sure. Um, doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure it's a 3 16 Yep, it does say 3 16 And just come here. Oh, it's hard to see. So, oh, there you go. Just kind of center, put the little dot in the center, punch a hole. Do the, do the same over here. Try to keep it straight-ish. Where is it? There it is. Looks a little bit off. Okay, punch a hole. <clears throat> then you can just take your scissors and kind of just, um, actually it'd probably be easier to show you like that. So you see how that shape, you could actually literally just cut straight down like that and get rid of that. And you kind of made your, your, um, the slide, the spot so that you could put it on. Um, oh, sorry. And that's, that's one of the other things. There are, there are products out there where you could do, um, to actually make a memory decks box. Um, I know Nicole on our design team, she actually did a project a couple of years, maybe three years ago now, where um, she made a little memory dex holder. So basically people make a box, they use straws, two straws. Um, that's, the, that's the purpose of putting the holes here. So you just, you would just um, stick your memory dex on both of the straws and then it actually helps them hold up. So that's why we're cutting these holes. I hope that makes sense to you. So you can determine, actually, let me see how high this is. This is, oh, this is actually three eighths of an inch, not a half of an inch. So you can measure up, when I measured up a half an inch, you can only measure up, um, if you wanna make it the same way, measure up three eighths of an inch, or just cut an eighth, eighth of an inch off of there. Same thing, works the same way. So I haven't always had that 
uh, well, I actually have had that that uh, memory dex punch for a long time. There are people out there that have, you know, dies for sale. I really honestly don't think you need it. I think you could just punch the holes and make your own. Okay, so that is that. <laughs> so now what I want to do is just add the black pattern paper, my much beloved artisan cardstock. I'm going to put some glue. You want to let, use a strong adhesive here. And I'm just going to cover up the uglies. <laughs> just make sure it gets good stick. Oh, I don't want to wipe that because it'll wipe off the marker. Okay, so there's that. Oh, I actually need to punch this. I am going to put the glue on the two by where on the side that says two by four because I don't want that showing up on the back. We're covering the uglies, as I like to say. like to make sure it gets a good stick there like on those little tiny pieces um, I don't see I see some wet glue but I don't see any of the chipboard around the outside but maybe right there okay so I think perfect okay and then what we're gonna do is just take and center our little coffin. I think I think I might move it up about a half of an inch from there because I want to use some dangly dangly bits. So I should have brought two straws over. Sorry, I didn't. Actually, I can turn it into two. Ta-da! <laughs> So you'll see it actually it kind of turns it into that so see how obviously it's holding it up and then yeah I think I'm going to put it right there I'm going to come up about a half of an inch from the hole so I'm actually I'm going to wait to put that on um, until we get closer to the end. So, yeah. So you can actually just set this aside with your little coffin. All right, now let's just go ahead <clears throat> excuse me, and make our uh, rosette. Okay, so we have two pieces here. We're just gonna go ahead and accordion fold a lot of people um, <laughs> that I know like to just make sure that this is all super duper straight. And I was like, man, it's handmade. Knock yourself out. But I'm going to just speed through it like I do everything in life. <laughs> so, oh, well, crap. I should have inked the edges first. Let's see. It gets me in trouble every time. All right. So... Pro tip, dang, those are hard to open. Before you fold your, on your score lines for your um, rosette, ink your edges first if you're inking. Don't be like me, do it the right way. And again, this is just covering up the white edge. I feel like it mocks me when I forget in my projects to ink the edges. And you don't have to ink if you don't want to. That's fine too. You can see I'm not trying to be perfect. I am just... <clears throat> oh, well, I just inked my nail. Perfect. Okay. 
Oopsie. That's really not even going to be seen. dry a little bit. Let's go back and just refold this one. And then at the end I like to give it a good squeeze. You can go back and you can use your bone folder. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just going to go ahead and fold again. Mountain valleys, mountain valleys. Every now and again just kind of straighten it up. It'll do whatever you tell it to do, as long as you scored it properly. <clears throat> It'll look okay. When I say score it properly, I mean make sure your, your paper doesn't get like off square, if that makes sense. Okay, so there is our little half of our rosette. So if you're using the pattern paper, or I'm sorry, a directional paper, make sure you have both pieces or both facing the same direction. Um, mine are, so I am going to make sure that, that looks right to me. I'm gonna go ahead and take my hot glue, which, whoo, it gets so hot. Actually, let me get my little finger. There's my finger. I'm just going to put some hot glue on the end here. Ooh. I don't know if you saw that smoke pop up, but that Ryobi gets so hot. I'm just going to line up my edge. Ooh, that's hot. Line it up. Go back and give a little squish, make sure it all kind of stays together. <clears throat> then we have this end. Just gonna bring this end to this end. Do the same right there. Oh, it didn't squeeze out that time. Woohoo! Okay, all right, so then you have your little, your little rosette. I just love those little pumpkins. Okay, so then what I like to do is then, you can do your rosette however you like it, but then I just like to go like this, oh, and just kind of re-fold um, on those score lines. Okay, so then, so I have two one inch circles. I want to, I'm going to place one smack dab if you have a scoreboard like that. Smack dab in the middle. I'm going to take, put a big dollop of hot glue there. Like again, I said earlier, you can use art glitter glue for this. Um, then I'm going to kind of just push in. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Push in on my rosette and try to center to grab a good bit of that hot glue and just squish it. And hold that down for a second. And then, oh, see how it gets off center? And then I can actually come over here before the hot glue dries. And just kind of reform it, reshape it. This does not have to be perfect. Now again, this is the bottom, so no worries. So you can see I am able to touch it and that's not burning me. There is the top, super cute. Okay, then I'm going to take, oh, see there's, it's opening up a little bit. So I'm gonna squish a little bit of hot glue down inside there. Kind of spread the little thingamajigs open to get the glue to go down and then squish it. Okay, so to hold that, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bead of glue. See that little bit of glue popping out from the center? And then I'm going to add a nice dollop of hot glue here. 
take my circle, center it. Again, this is going to be covered up with a bunch of stuff, so just make it as straight as you can. Hold it down. Wow, that's even hot through my little silicone finger. Okay. Rosette. Done. It really is that easy. Actually, I keep looking at this, and I think I like this side even better. We'll see. We'll see how the rest of it plays out. So there is our little, oh, I pulled it up. I need to add a little bit of glue under there. See, I moved on before the glue was set, so. All right. All right, I love that you can see the orange on the edges. I just think it makes it look super cute. Now you can't really see the pumpkin. Well, you can. You can see the pumpkins there and then all the candies here. I just think that's so cute. So it kind of looks like a two-sided um, rosette. And it's all the same on the back. All right, so now let's bring our little coffin back and let's start having some fun. I'm gonna put my little hole punch. Well, I'll leave it out. I might need it. So now what do we do? You'll know as soon as I do. Okay, so we have, or I have, here's some of the pages that I have left, or the stickers. These are the stickers I have left. We could do a lot with these stickers. And then I have some solid sheets of card, uh, scraps of the solid cardstock. I have this little bit of this page. I love, oops, I love you for your brains. Oh, that is too cute. And then it says boo. This is the reverse side of the little skull and crossbones. Love this. We may see those make an appearance. And then I was really bummed I didn't use this page. I love these little spooky houses. Um, we may end up doing some fussy cutting here. And then that's the reverse side. I thought I would use this instead of this um, striped pattern paper. But I think this is a little too dark. Um, I may end up using it, I may not, but we'll see. Okay, so what I wanna do first, so I wanna figure out, I'm probably gonna use that well, I know I'm going to use that. And it says, hey, boo. And then I have this little guy. This one I might fussy cut out and make, um, and use it. But this one, I was thinking I would do three, oh, my little monster. Um, oh, I lost my piece of acetate that was here on my desk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. So I have a piece of acetate here. I don't know if you can see it. There you can see it. Um, like I did here, I'm going to put some of these and have them sticking out from the coffin. I just think it's so super cute. And it's so easy to do. So I am going to... So this is the piece of acetate. It doesn't need to be very long. Whoops. It only has to be as long as um, however far you want it to stick out. Now, again, I did it again. If you're going to, I recommend you watch my videos before you actually do the project because I tend to forget. So if you want to do this, it may, kind of makes it invisible, makes it look like your stickers or whatever are flying. Um, I don't think you need more than a half inch, half inch wide piece of acetate. Um, but again, I should have glued these down before I put down, glued down my pattern paper. I keep forgetting. I think I'll be able to cover them up anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, but, um, so I'm going to cut a few strips that are half of an inch and this is four inches tall. It's probably much more than I need, but I had this piece of acetate in my, in my acetate drawer. Um, so I just went with it. Okay, 
So I'm going to need three. I think at this point I'm only going to want three. So I know you can't see it. I'm sorry. So I'm going to take a half an inch. Where'd it go? So there's one. Two. And... And then I have this, this is probably like three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna put that there and I have it left over. Okay, so here I have all three of them. Keep track of those because they, they disappear very easily. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some score tape. I found score tape's the easiest to use. And I am just going to cut just a few little, maybe half inch pieces. Actually, I'm only going to cut two for now. And then I'm just going to take and put that right on, right on the edge. On the very edge. One, because it helps me keep track of it. <laughs> and two, it makes it easier to stick down. Okay, so, whoops. That's a little off center, but that's okay. So what I was saying was like, it'll get glued right here. Um, and then we will just figure out whatever we end up attaching to it. We'll put a piece of score tape on the other end. Okay, so now I have this little guy. Love this little guy. I just wanna see how wide this is. So this is about an inch and three quarters. Well, this is two inches. I'm gonna grab my two inch punch. Now, I don't think I have a scallop one. Not sure, this, this could be difficult. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get. Why don't I have an inch and a half? <laughs> um, let me see, bear with me. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Don't struggle like me. Yeah, it's gonna have to be a circle. All right. Nope, nope not that one. Here it is, okay. So I'm gonna take this one. I don't wanna cut off the bat's wing I might have to. I'm going to have to. Okay, you see what I did there? I just centered that. Oh, actually, maybe not. Yep. You could fussy cut this if you wanted to, which would cut out probably 20 minutes. But I'm just going to... just going to cut it. Sorry, Mr. Bat. You lost your wing. All right, so then I'm gonna also cut, ah, out of a scrap piece of the bat pattern paper. I'm gonna cut another circle. Come on, come out. That'll be the back. Okay, and then do I, oh. Come on, neighbor. I can't believe he's doing this every time I want to. Every time I want a video, my neighbor's doing something that makes noise. And I hope you can't hear it, but love him to death, but holy moly. Okay, so how cute is that? So let's take that, let's grab some. Some foam squares. You can find foam squares, country craft creations. You can find just about anything you need to do gorgeous projects at country craft creations. So I know I do. I almost exclusively buy, buy from Tamara because number one, I love her to death. And number two, she has the best. 
Okay, I just put a little bit of, um, what is this, ink around here. And I'm going to do the same here, try to cover up some of that weight. It's harder to do without an ink dauber, but you can do it. You can make it work. Okay. And on this one. Okay. I didn't even realize I still had that on my finger. <clears throat> okay. So let's take, this is the little moon. I'm going to take some glue. I'm going to put a little bit here, a little bit here. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add two foam squares. I like to put glue on there because I don't know how long, I don't know how long the, um, the adhesive on the foam squares will last. So that little extra, oops, that little extra bit of glue um, is good. All right, let's take this guy. Oops. Okay, and I'm just going to center that on there. I mean, how cute, come on. See, you can do this with any paper collection, you know. Um, so then, right, then I'm gonna take my little, my little score tape. So I'm gonna flip it over. Uh, I'm gonna cut another little piece. I'm going to flip over that acetate so that I have one, one piece of adhesive on the back and another on the front. That actually might be two. It's too long. Don't want it to show. So I'm just going to put some right there. Remove the adhesive. And I'm going to center. I want to make sure that I don't know which way I like it. Do I like it this way? Or do I want this like this? I think I want it to go like this. And then just stick it down. Then I'm going to take this circle. I could just do another scallop circle, but I don't think it doesn't bother me too much. Basically, I'm just wanting to hide. the um, acetate. So there's that <laughs> little wobbly. So I think, I don't know yet, but I think that might go here or it might go up here or over here. I don't know, but at least I have it ready for when I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just set that aside. Um, let's see. Okay. Next. I don't know if I should do the same with this little guy. You know what? Let's just do it. So let's take him or her, don't know, and we're just going to center him or her within the punch. Okay, and then we're just going to bad. It's still cute. Okay, and then I don't think I'm going to do a scallop on that one, but I am going to take a scrap of green, green paper. This will be the back. And then I think I think we're gonna keep the the trick or treat. Mm. Uh, we'll see. We might keep it just. No, I haven't decided. Okay, so now let's take another. Let's ink her up. 
I think this is a girl skelly. Because she's got a pink lollipop in her hair. <laughs> oh no. She's a, she's a jack-o'-lantern. She's a bucket. She's still a girl. Okay. So then we're going to ink up this. Cover up the white. I'm going to flip her over. I love that too. Oh, you can't see it. It looks so out of focus. What the heck? Hmm. There we go. All right, I'm going to put couple of dots of the glue. You could probably get away with just using one, but I am known for my overkill. Okay, give that some pressure. Hmm. Okay. Let's take our our next acetate piece. So turn it upside down so the sticky part is on this side. And let's cut about half inch score tape. Okay, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to stick that right into the sticky part of the foam squares. Okay, then I'm going to add some wet glue. And then add... at our bucket. So there we have that one. So now we have two. I don't know. What do you all think? Nobody's answering me. Should we do a trick-or-treat? Um, I think we need a trick-or-treat. And I think what I want to do is I want to just square this up. I didn't cut it very well. Let's ink it. Again, you can't really see. Well, you can see the ink a little bit. Okay. So this is two inches by two inches. Let's cut us a colorful square. That is, do we wanna do green? Let's take a piece of the green. <clears throat> Just gonna cut two and a quarter. Two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Quarter by two, where did he go? So it will have I think that's cute. And let's turn that into a little tag. So I'm gonna use my angle. I have angle and photo. The punch. I'm using the angle side, making it into a little tag. I'm gonna do the same one. One side here, instant tag. All right. Again, not really worrying if it's sloppy or not because most of that will get covered back up. <clears throat> Mm 
Okay. I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to stick it down my acetate first. Then I'm going to take my two squares. I actually might put a third one up here. Try to center that best you can. Okay, and then I need to add a piece of my score tape on the bottom. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna have these three sticking out somehow. All right, so let's move forward so I am I think I've decided I wanted to shake your boo thing <laughs> to be the focus here so I am going to oh ooh, you'll see on the background I actually changed the background because um, I got off the hot glue and I don't want to get that everywhere so I took this was the four by four cut apart I cut it down to three and a half by three and three quarters. Then I used a corner chomper. It is the stub and scallop corner chomper. And I just used the stub, which makes it look like a ticket edge. I did that because they, they did that here on the black piece. So I thought, thought that was cute to keep it consistent. So I'm just inking these up. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to be careful on this one. Because I don't want too much orange showing. But I don't want the white to show. Okay. Get this last little piece here. So then what I also have is a piece of the mirror card. Oh, you're going to see my camera. So this is the Craft Perfect, I think it's called Black Magic Mirror Card. Again, it will be um, linked down below. This is fantastic. I love it. So you can see, woo, spooky, spooky. <laughs> um, yeah, I just tried to keep it out of the, there's my light and my camera. Anyway, I'm going to set that aside for now. Oh, so I cut this <clears throat> I cut this piece down to four <clears throat> by four and a quarter. So what we're going to do is take a little boo thing <clears throat> and we're going to center it. I should probably tell you the size of this one. The pink piece is four inches by three and three quarters. So I'm going to use my foam squares here. I'm going to put and put two in the middle. All right. So, and you can judge if you have I just happen to have these longer foam squares. If you have some they come in circle size or square, these are rectangles. Um use whatever you have or if you have foam tape, that's perfect too. Again, it's probably overkill, but okay. And I'm going to remove the backers. Oh, let's get this out of the way. 
Let's turn that over. Now I'm just going to center this on here. Just want the little bit of the pink peeking out. Just want to pull out that pink color. It's hard to tell, but there is a pink, very pale pink there. And as I'm putting this glue <laughs> on here, I'm hoping that the glue will hold. This is a slick surface. I mean, it should as paper. So, there should be very little showing out, very little black showing around the outside. Um, yeah, it's actually holding really well. Okay. And we'll leave that sit for a second, let that dry. Oh, does it look straight to everybody? You're probably all screaming at me. It's crooked, it's crooked, because it is crooked. Okay. Oh, is that better? I think it's better. Okay. All right, so that's going to go right about there. So now the fun actually starts. I think this is the fun part, trying to figure out what goes where. So I actually want, I want this to be on a, a little angle. I think... I'm gonna have these peek out like this. Ugh, I might have to bring this up. Hmm, that's too late now. I can't put it on the back side. Then we'll go like that. This is gonna be one tall memory dex. <laughs> oh, too much, too much. Okay, which I think that's okay. I think it's good. Hmm. And then this will be, this will be under here like this, and it's gonna get covered up like I said. It'll go like this, like this, and then we have. Hmm, I might have to move that up even further. Then we'll have. Um, I wish you over here to tell me what to do. <laughs> oh, I have this little black cat that I had for a while in my stash. And then I have this little guy. I don't know. I don't know what we'll do yet. And then we have stickers and all the things. Okay, so. Oh, spooktacular. Oh, if this wasn't so skinny, it would be so fun to have that sticking up on a piece of Oh, that might go there. Okay. Okay. So. Let's take all this off. Okay, I'm going to hold down. That and then stick that down. And then place it back on. We want this one. Nobody's talking to me. Come on, peeps. Okay. So that'll go like that. Hold that down. Remove the backer. Stick that down. So that's two out of three. Just give it a, some good pressure. You know that it's stuck down well when your actual uh, score tape kind of disappears, even though when it goes, uh, not disappears, um, translucent kind of from, it's kind of like milky uh, and then it goes translucent. So I'm going to put this back in. I don't know. Now I feel like I don't want that. I want the cat. 
feel like I want the black. Oh, we got to do the black hat. Sorry, everybody. We're going to change from this one. I could keep this for another one. Uh, I'm going to grab... Where did I put that? Here it is. Thank goodness I saved this one. I'm going to cut this down to a half inch. I'm going to try to. Okay. It's a little more than a half inch, but that's all right. All right. Score tape. Grab the kitty. Mm. He needs to be on a circle, doesn't he? Does he need to be there? You can't really see him. Oh, that's cute. Yep, that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's take this and put this here Oops. okay now I'm gonna cut that's two inches that's two inches I'm gonna cut an inch and a half circle It. Do we want pink? Let's see. Inch and a half. I think I like it better this way. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to put some glue on him. I know I want his face. Okay. Because I want to be able to see his eyes. I'm going to actually use some, maybe some stickles, some colored stickles to put on his eyes. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to put a two glue dot, to, sorry, two glue squares, foam squares, good gravy, on here to get, pop him up and give him some dimension. about his tail but much it might be okay okay so oh my god that's adorable okay I am gonna use a piece of score tape down here far up we want him to stick okay so let's get rid of this stuff first do you 
does this happen to you when you craft? All of a sudden you look down and you have trash everywhere. <laughs> this it's kind of like my thing. Okay. Um Okay, tell me when to stop. Like right there, I think. I think I want it to be I haven't stuck down the score tape yet, so oh, crap. It's crooked. I think I want him to be right there. It doesn't matter because he's gonna like bobble all over the place. So there we go. <laughs> That's so cute. I love it. And then what I'll do is I will go at the end um, and use some glossy accents on the bats. Um, where is that? Where is my? I use this. Tamara has this in her store. It will it will dry shiny. Um, love it, love it, love it. Okay, all right. So now here we have the beginnings of. Our little coffin memory decks. Okay, I just have to center it, figure out how are we gonna how I'm gonna center it, I have to figure out how I'm gonna use this. Okay, and then we have the spooktacular. I think it might just go or I don't know. I don't know. I might use it, I might not. It kind of gets lost. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I love some dimension, is I am going to add a bunch of foam squares. Okay. I'm going to add my foam. Oh, you can't really see the, the glue. So I'm just going to grab, stick them down. And I think before I do that, though, I'm going to go back to my little bucket of goodies. And go back to remember this? This tool. And I'm wondering if I maybe, oh shoot, if I maybe want to just kind of pleat this, you know, and have it stick. Oh no, I just had another thought. I have, in my little bag of tricks, I have some of this fantasy fiber um, that I know Tamara sells, oh sorry for the crinkling, she sells it in the store. It, you know, you can get it in different colors. Oh, how cute would that be sticking out? Ooh. Okay. All right, I get excited. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm just gonna grab a big bit of it. And can you see the sparkle coming off of it? In person it has like the green, maybe because I have green in my shirt. Oh, you can't see that. Um, literally, there's nothing to, I mean, there's nothing to it. Maybe there is a, a rhyme or reason, but I don't know. So, The way I do it is I literally just kind of set it down. Oh, I love it. Oh, I feel so bad because you can't really see it. So if I bring this up, can you see it now? Absolutely love it. And what I'm trying to do is figure out how far down it needs to come, which It is everywhere. This is so, so fun. Okay. Okay, 
I think that'll be good. So what I need to do is kind of pick all this up in one piece. There's no going back now, friends. We're putting some hot glue down. It's probably melting the acetate to the, to the chipboard. And bam. So we're going to grab our finger, go safety first, and just kind of push down where you can see the glue. Don't worry too much about it because it'll be held down once we put our little thingamajiggy down. This is going to shed for days. So it's gonna, oh, that's gonna look so cute. Kind of looks like spider webs. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of glue, put a little bit there to help hold that down. Shoot. Oops. And you don't have to have this. You might, maybe you have something that you like to use. Um, yeah, but I absolutely love this stuff. This will be all over my house for weeks. I find the stuff in the stairs, the carpeting on the stairs, uh, but I don't care. I love it. Same thing with, um, for me, it's the same thing with sequins. They get stuck to my slipper. <laughs> they end up in my carpet in my living room. They're everywhere. I consider that part of being a happy home. Here we go. I feel like I'm forgetting a step. So if you haven't realized it yet, I'm very much a fly by the seat of my pants decorator. You never know what I'm gonna do. So, okay. Now I'm going to actually, this time, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue here. Ow. Ow. Burnt myself. Okay. All right. Make sure it's straight. Everything's straight. Ready? One, two, three. It's too late to go back now. Okay. Oh my God, I love it. Don't you just love it? Okay. Okay, next I want to, again, I'm coming back into my, my little bag of tricks here. I really thought I was gonna use this, but yeah, it's okay. Now I'm catching this. Or is that too much orange? That's probably too much orange. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Where is it? So I have this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's cut us off a piece of this. I don't know. Like, you can, buy, you can find this kind of stuff pretty much anywhere. Um... I can never tell which is the top and which is the bottom. I think, I think I'm going to go. Because what I was thinking was taking this and then my little, some white eyelash trim on top of it. And, wait, where'd it go? And then my little, oh, that could be super cute. Let's give that a try. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. As you can see, I have the glitter stuff everywhere. All right, I am going to make this a straight line. See how like this, like this? I hope you can see it. I'm gonna put a little piece of score tape on each end here to kind of, that's why I got one of these silicone mats 
So I'm going to put a piece of score tape here, stick it to the mat, and pull up the paper and flatten that end and then do the same over here. I just want to make it easier to hold this down for now. Stick that end in. So see it kind of keeps it straight-ish so I don't have to, it won't keep wrap, wrap Raveling, reveling, raveling, raveling, raveling up. <laughs> Good gravy. So first I was thinking that would be cute, and it would be cute if this was an orange. We need some some contrast. So I'm gonna go with. Oh, I guess I I could. Oh, I could do that. And then. That, is that a little much? That seems like a little much. Okay, too much. Too much, Amory. Okay. So we have that black. Okay, then we're going to take some eighth inch score tape, which we all have these this in our stash. I've probably had this for five years. I rarely use it. But I'm going to put some... On there. I realize this is wider than my my thing, but I would just like to be able to chomp off the edges. Okay, so then I'm gonna take the paper off. I'm gonna take it off part way. Because if you ever worked with this stuff, <laughs> it wants to stick to everything. Okay, so I'm gonna try. And stick this right in the score tape, just the very edge. Okay. This is not easy. <laughs> So, this is exactly what I feared. Okay, here we go. Just want to make sure that the fringes are hanging down and not sticking up. Most of it will get covered, but... Okay. Wow, that's pretty awful. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I'm sure you'll, you'll do better. So, you see what I'm going for there? It's kind of like, again, more spiderweb fringe. This piece keeps wanting to roll up. Stay where I put you, dang it. Okay. <laughs> wow, that looks awful on the screen. <laughs> but, I mean, so I could use that or... I think I want to use this because I don't want. Hmm. How come I can't see you guys? There it is. Okay. So now I'm going to figure out how the heck am I going to do this part? And maybe just put that there. What do y'all think? Somebody tell me. So let's grab another piece of score tape. Hmm, you know what? It would have been smarter to put the score tape on the pom pom, but no. Okay, let's see. Let's do a little bit at a time. Cover up the black. Okay, I think that works. All right. 
I just think that is too cute. So that'll stick down like that. Oh, love it. I'm going to fix this a little bit. Oh, there you go. Okay. Right? It's supposed to be scary spooky. Cutesy, scary, spooky. That is too much. Okay. So I'm going to just lift this little bit of score tape off of there. All the sticky's gone. Before I do that, <clears throat> I might want to set this down, because if you remember, I said I was going to do it this way. I probably still can. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, I don't know which is the top. Okay, so let's go. Scissors. I'm going to leave it too long so I can cut it off in the end. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. What do you think? Because... It's going to cover up my little... I may end up not using this. Oh, yeah, we're using it. Okay. Um, I'm going to take... Ugh. I hate to cover that up. But the little skelly. But that's okay. I can add another one. <laughs> Alright. So, how are we going to glue this down? We are going to, let's make sure we have the right side, which is the right side. I think it has a little bit of something. I think this is the right side. So we are going to again, this time I'm going to use quarter inch score tape. Sorry, my score tape is on the wall behind my, my computer and my camera. I have a what is that thing called? The Ikea pegboard system behind my camera. All my punches, all my good stuff are hanging up there. Okay, score tape. Yeah, I have I've got a plethora. Eighth inch, three eighths of an inch, and <laughs> quarter inch. All the good stuff. It's like crafter's paradise. Okay. Here we go. Did I put that on the wrong side? No. So As you can see, I think it's better for this to be longer than you need. So for 
for this next section, I'm just going to you know, put it on fast forward and let it play and you can, you know, follow along with how I decided to decorate the memory decks. So let's <clears throat> keep going here. My glue gun, my my glue gun shut off and I had to recharge it. <laughs> oh, it drives me crazy. Okay, so here's here's what we have. I'm just absolutely loving that. Okay, so I think I've decided I'm gonna use this. Alright, so I'm gonna speed this up again and let you watch the last few minutes of decorating um, the memory decks and this is always the funnest part so I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you at the end
Okay, you didn't really think I was done, did you? <laughs> so now I really am done, just waiting for everything to dry. So here is my spooktacular Halloween coffin-shaped memory decks card. And yeah, so what I did is on the bats, if you look at their little eye, I added another bat sticker. If you look at their little eyes, they were white, but they were you could barely see them, so I just took my white gel pen and just dotted their eyes. My little green, sorry, my little foam black, shiny black foam cat, good lord. You couldn't really see his eyes, so I took some yellow glitter sparkles, uh, not sparkles, stickles, you can see there, and I just gave him some spooky eyes. I gave the little skeleton bucket, you can see I used the same yellow um, uh, stickles made his eyes a little spooky and where, what else did I do um, what else? oh I added a bunch of sequins I think where I, we left off I was saying that I was going to add some sequins so you can see I used some orange like a pretty green and a gold sequence is just so that it catches the light. I think it just kind of brings everything to light. I put an orange sequin right there and my, I added the little pumpkin down here and I don't know if you could tell because it's still wet. See if you look at his eyes, I added some glossy accents to his eyes. It's not quite dry yet. And yeah, I think, oh, I added some glossy accents to the little skelly's eyes here. You can see it kind of looks a little milky. That just tells you that it's still wet. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then over here, this bat over here, I used the white gel pen on his eyes. So that is my project for the day. Um, I'm gonna send this out to one of my crafty friends for Halloween. I just think it's so cute. So this is the point where I would typically ruin it <laughs> because I think it needs more because I was just, I just had the thought, I wonder if I should put some dash lines around. I'm just going to stop. I'm not adding anything else. This is it. I love it. Oh, let's just, in the end, it ends up being, let me give you some measurements again. At the, oops. At its widest point, it's about six inches wide. And if I go up to the cat... Oh, let's do it this way to the tippy tippy top of the cat it's almost 11 inches tall from the top of the cat to the bottom here it's almost 11 inches tall um i love it i hope you like it thanks for hanging out with me today while i made this and i will see you next time <laughs>